Okay, let's keep moving right along and learn the next technique for selecting variables. So this one's called permutation feature importance. Go ahead and search for that and pull it out here. This one works differently than filter-based feature selection. It has kind of the opposite set of advantages and disadvantages from filter-based feature selection. This one actually goes down here. We're going to eliminate filter-based feature selection. Pull select columns directly in right there. We'll go ahead and move these up. Permutation feature importance requires two inputs, a trained model and a test data set. Where are you going to get a trained model from? Well, right here, the output of trained model. So again, a trained model is a set of coefficient weights. That means that it relies on having um, the multiple linear regression already performed and run, or some other algorithm there. And it takes those weights. And then what it does is it standardizes the weights in such a way that it rank orders them uh, from most effective to least effective. And it also takes into account other algorithms that don't give you regression coefficients. The other thing, it nice, the other nice thing it does is with categorical variables that um, are going to give you a whole bunch of different coefficients, like education, because it turns education into dummy codes, we get a different co a coefficient for high school, partial high school, partial college, college, graduate, right? It combines all of those into one score. That makes it very, very useful. Because we could simply look at a trained model and look at the coefficients to try to determine which variables we want to keep. However, permutation feature importance makes that process easier by combining them together. However, it does need the test data set. Where do we get test data from? Well, remember, back up here in split data, we divide it up into a training result set and a testing result set. So we grab the testing result set and pull that in right down here. Let's move this over a bit. Uh, there's not a very nice way to show it with those lines crossing. Oh, well, that's fine. So we're going to keep all the variables coming through, and we're going to run down to here. OK, I just got an error, and actually then edit my video and go back and fix it. I want to show you this error because you're going to run into it many, many times. In fact, I still run into it all the time, as you can see, and I want to point it out to you. So it says here, uh, unsupported parameter type metric for measuring performance. That's because I didn't edit some things. First of all, let's go over here to, our, here to our properties and add a random seed. Just one, two, three, four, five, so your results will compare to mine. Because it's going to grab random samples of that test data to come up with these importance scores for each variable. However, it also says here that it wants us to determine what's the metric that you're going to use to evaluate your model. How do you determine how good your model is? Well, it tells you right here a variety of, of metrics. You recognize this one, coefficient of determinations are R squared and root mean squared error. You haven't learned classification yet because we haven't done algorithm testing yet. Or maybe you have, maybe you've done them out of order and you know what these are. Either way, what this means is uh, classification, it's a metric we use when the dependent variable is text or categorical. Uh, regression is a model where the dependent variable is numeric. So by default, it was set to the first one on the list, classification accuracy. But our dependent variable purchased by numeric is numeric. So uh, this isn't going to work. We need to give it a metric that it can use for a numeric dependent variable, which is any one of these regression items. So let's use coefficient of determination, R squared, and let's run all this one more time. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. So notice that there's no filtering done going in here. It went ahead and pulled all of the variables through. And instead, down here, after the trained model, we get this analysis. So again, let me show you the results of trained models so you can see why permutation feature importance is so helpful. So here we get this, uh, okay, region Pacific. That particular value of region was very useful. Occupation professional, well, okay, I'll hold on one second. The problem is we've got region Europe and North America down here. So how important is the region variable overall? Do I judge it by this one up here or by these down, down here? So that's one of the problems that this solves. Um, so let's go and take a look at this now. Permutation feature importance. OK, now regions combined into one factor, one variable. Same with all my others that had multiple categorical values. And it makes those scores comparable to the numeric fields like cars. So this one says um, cars is most important, marital status on down to uh, 
these down here. Occupation, when you see a negative value here, how do you interpret that? Well, to explain, let's go to the documentation on this pill, permutation feature importance, and read it here with me. So it's, uh, let's skip down to right here. In this model, feature values, so this is the columns, our independent variables, are randomly shuffle, shuffled one column at a time. And the performance of the model, meaning our R squared, is measured before and after by adding one column at a time. You can choose one of the standard metrics, uh, which we did, and we chose R squared. The scores that the model returns represent the change in performance of a trained model after permutation. So after adding this in and including all others randomly, how much improvement is this variable going to add? Important features are usually more sensitive to shuffling process and will thus result in higher important scores. So a higher number means that it, it, does, it improves the R squared more after uh, a, a random shuffling of variables, you know, it, it mixes up the order that the, that the variables go in. And when you take, if you, um, depending on where you're taking this class, uh, you'll, if you get in more depth into regression, you'll notice that the order that the variables go into the model do have an effect. So one more reason why this pill is particularly useful is it, it randomly shuffles the order of variables to eliminate that, that potential issue. But anyway, back here, what it means is cars has the biggest effect on R squared after many random shuffles uh, and combinations of the variables. Those that are negative are actually hurting the R squared. They're creating more variance than they're explaining. And that's just an, an outcome of the particular data set that we have. That doesn't mean these will always be that way. Uh, usually, actually, it shouldn't be. Well, no, it could, but anyway. Uh, when I look at these results, the first thing I think is, okay, I want to get rid of anything that's negative, absolutely, right now. If I trust the sample that I'm working with at least to a certain degree. And uh, to prevent overfitting, I might also get rid of some of the rest. So here's what we're going to do. Let's grab cars down to there. Let's copy those and let's go back to the Excel file we started back in the previous video uh, on um, filter-based feature selection. I'm going to go here to my charts tab and I'm going to paste these. This paste is a little bit better than filter-based feature selection did. All right, let's move these over now, and let's go ahead and insert a bar chart based on these right here. Okay, so this one is, whoops, this is permutation feature importance, um, and I'm just going to leave it just like that. Uh, actually, no, using R squared as our metric for assessing performance. So I look at this and I think, okay, clearly I'm going to get rid of the zeros and the negatives, and that's going to actually improve R squared. Let me do one model with all variables. So right here, what I want you to keep track of, I've got it listed in your checkpoint. So here, permutation feature importance, we want the list of variables, a chart visualizing the scores, and the R squared and RMSE of each model. Okay, I'm, I've been putting my charts on a separate sheet altogether. Um, so I might adjust these to say have one chart sheet to make things a bit simpler. But anyway, what I want right here is variables, R squared, R messy. So this variables list is going to be fairly long. Let's bold each of those. There we go. All right, so let's grab that variable list back from here on the charts page. Uh, copy, can I get it all in one? Probably want to. How do I want to do this? Let's see. Paste transpose. Maybe that didn't work so well. Let's clear formats. And you know what we can do is let's make these much smaller. I'm going to move this RMSE out here. Maybe I will go ahead and make these a bit smaller now. This is all just formatting. You guys can do it however you want. RMSE, oh, uh, R squared, I forgot that one. Paste, because I'm a bit obsessive compulsive, and I keep it in the same order as I had before. All right, so here's what we got. So we got all those. Let's see what our R squared and our RMSE are now uh, with those included. So our beginning with all of them. This is what we ended up with last time 
in the previous chapter with all variables included. So let's go back to Excel, plug that in, RMSC, plug that in. Okay, so what I want to do next is run a model that gets rid of these last two because those had negative values and appeared to be hurting the, uh, the model overall. That's not a guarantee. By removing them, what I'm trying to say here is it's not a guarantee that R squared will always improve and get better uh, because, again, that permutation feature importance was doing a random shuffle. However, there's a good chance that it will. So let's start by getting rid of those. Um, so back here, let's now do a model. And here, here's the difference. With filter-based feature selection, remember, I could just simply dial down the number of features it kept. With permutation feature importance, the difference is I have to come back here and actually take those out of the select columns list. So keep that in mind when you're trying to assess the advantages and disadvantages of each. So I need to get rid of gender numeric and occupation right here. Okay, check it and run. Let's go all the way down to evaluate model. All right, let's take a look and see what we got. Okay, coefficient of determination, 12.12. That went up in a big way. Awesome. Root mean squared error, looks like that also went down. Okay, that is so cool when things work out the way they're supposed to. That's awesome. Okay, let me clear the formats. And let's change those to numbers. Give them some decimals. Okay, cool. Um, oh, we know what I forgot to do is say, here's my list of variables for this model. So that's what I'm saying is the model with all variables, permutation feature importance, told me here's my R squared and RMSE, the model with these variables. Okay, so looking back at my charts again, um, and really you can put these charts on each individual sheet where they go, or you can put them all on one like this. I don't care, either way is fine. Uh, but looking at this, I might say, okay, to prevent overfitting, I do have a very natural place right here between education, between income and education, where the importance drops off significantly. So by removing these ones right here, because they have a positive importance, by removing them, my R squared will go down. However, my likelihood of overfitting will also go down, and I don't think my R squared will go down very much. So there's an acceptable amount of reducing your R squared to eliminate, or, or sorry, minimize your likelihood of overfitting that we can handle. So let's have one more model where we get rid of education, age, and home ownership, and run that last one. So I'm going to come here and say uh, education, age, homeowner. Get rid of those. Run one last model. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so like I thought, this did go down. Let's put it here on this one. Um, oh, let's copy down the variables. I got rid of those three and I kept these first six. And then let's grab RMSE, paste it there, and copy formats to those cells. All right, so let's evaluate here. It increased. Uh, by 1.7-ish, or 1.6, when I eliminated those two variables, and it decreased by, sorry, it increased by 0 0.01516, then it decreased by 0 0.0027-ish. So it barely dropped, actually, when I eliminated those three variables, and my RMSE barely went up. So in my opinion, uh, clearly this model has the best accuracy, but to eliminate the likelihood of overfitting, I like this model the best because it, it although it decreases these this number and increases this one, which is bad, it barely, it, it doesn't do it so much that it's not worth it. I would call that a, an acceptable trade-off. All right, that's it for uh, permutation feature importance. However, as a reminder, what's the difference, what's the trade-off here? So, the advantage is this is more accurate for determining which variables are best because by by making my analysis based off a trained model, I'm getting coefficients that are already taking into account the intercorrelations among all variables. It's not just a bivariate relationship like we got from filter-based feature selection. So this is a much more accurate tool to use to determine which variables are most important. What's the disadvantage then? 
The disadvantage is where it appears in the model. It's down here after train model, which means I can no longer dynamically determine exactly, I can't on the fly say, let's switch which models are being included in the train model because it's happening after it's been trained. Whereas filter-based feature selection was up here and I could say, give me the seven best or the eight best or the 10 best. And it would dynamically change with the data, whichever those seven, eight best were, it would let those come through the model. So it's kind of the antithesis or the opposite of the filter-based feature selection.